everybody have their book on them? Handbook for New Stoics? We do. We are. We are embarking on our conversation about week seven. And if you're following on in your readers, this is page 53. And it's take a much broader perspective. So when the Stoics talk about negative emotions or passions, they talk about how this can be unhealthy when it kind of steals all of your ability to reason. It's, the Stoics don't believe it's bad to feel strongly about something, but when you feel so strongly that it kind of clouds your vision, that's when it can become dangerous. And they want you to be, you to be able to put things into perspective especially if you're somebody who stews over problems or worries about problems long past when you can actually do anything about it. Uh, there's a quote in here from Marcus Aurelius, and they talk about how if you can embrace the whole universe in your view and comprehend all eternity and imagining the swiftness of change in each particular, seeing how brief is the passage from birth to dissolution. Dissolution, you could also say, as death. Um, so kind of, these are some really big ways of kind of zooming, doing the zoom out lens on your problem or your perceived problem. Mm -hmm. Um, what they're asking us to do, they're, they're giving us three options of ways to do this. Um, and it's interesting. I love how they talk about the challenges that Marcus Aurelius had. Um, they say he had to, he had two wars going on, a plague and uh, stopping a rebellion and he was also had poor health and didn't have any experience so they're giving us ways of shifting our attention to what's under your control ways of looking at things kind of i think of backing up the lens so the first one is to think about the vastness of time thinking about the time that maybe our planet has been around. And if you look at it from that way, the second one is the vastness of space. So kind of floating out of your own body, seeing literally like the world below you and, and how much space there is. You can continue to see like where we are in the galaxy. And then the third way is to the relative size of your problem. So think about how your problem is maybe small compared to another person's problem in this world. And in this week, they ask us to think of a minor problem and then try all three of these and see what is useful. So I would love to hear from you guys what you thought. I'll, I'll go, I'll start. So with this one, I, 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 I like it and I, don't at the same time in that I think that there can be a risk of making everything that you go through seem trivial and while that can in fact be true there are things that are truly real problems that you have to deal with I know you know I think I've, we've talked about this before but you know a lot of things can feel like a first world problem like oh you know my air conditioning is broken or whatever, whatever it might be. And so, yes, you could certainly say, oh, this inconvenience of my air conditioning being broken is not as bad as someone's home being bombed in Syria, right? Like that's, but it can, I think there's instances where it can decrease it so much in that you never truly address your problem because you're always comparing it to something that's much bigger and much worse than others. But what I did like about it is that it can still help you gain perspective. They talk about being mindful about not taking too broad of a perspective, not stepping too far out, going just far enough that it can help you gain that perspective. So if you think about something, the one that I really liked the most was time, the vastness of time. Because I think comparing mm -hmm. your thing to somebody else's thing, again, that's where you can constantly find the triviality of it. Or comparing this moment to you know, when there was a real, real plague, like a big plague, you know, that, yes, right. that, that can help you go, ah, it's not a big deal, which is still true, but you don't want to reduce the importance of what's happening right now. But the time one I liked, because I think, at least for me, 
the way I looked at it was it doesn't have to be through all of time, but it starts maybe you start with this, the next one. Is this the most important thing to me this hour? Is this the most important thing to me or do I need to focus on this? Is this going to be the most important thing for me for this day, for this week, for this month, for this year? And then if you wanted to go out further, is this something that's going to uh, burden me? You know, you could go all the way to your deathbed if you wanted, but I like starting small. Don't go too broad, but look at it from, is this the thing that I want to focus my attention on for a period of time, starting really small, this minute, this hour, this day, this week, this month, and so on. So you can start low and, you know, kind of keep ticking it up as far as you need to in order to help you gain that, that better perspective. Um, the other thing that I liked is that they talk about the fact that rumination or fretting or whatever you want to call it for a modern day term of this, they said, you know, your misery, it says here from Marcus, your misery is self-inflicted and it doesn't help you remedy the initial offense. If you focus on the thing that yeah. happened and that's where you put your energy, that thing already happened. You can't change it. That was in the past. You can't fix it. So mm -hmm. stop focusing on the offense. Your misery, the, you know, if you were wronged and focusing your anger on that person and they shouldn't have, again, the shoulds, they shouldn't have done this, or I'm so mad or whatever it is, instead of focusing on how you can pivot. Like they give a really good example here of a woman who got screwed by a mechanic. And like she could focus all of her energy on the mechanic and how bad he was and how she got screwed and she was wrong and blah, 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 blah. That, that doesn't matter. You are already screwed. What you can do is you can take it and pivot to be more productive. You can do a little bit more research next time. You can file a complaint with the business bureau. You can put a review and that's a pleasant review on Google or Yelp or whatever. You can remedy it for the future, but you learned, you take what happened and you apply it to your next thing that you're going to do in the future. So you know now, I'm not going to use that mechanic, lesson learned, going to find somebody else. We're going to do a little bit more research, but focusing on the, the offense is not going to help you actually move forward in any way. So that's, that's my take on it. The, you know, the, the time one was the one that I tended to connect with the most, the temporal um, just because it, it helps you start really low and tick up higher without making anything that you experience trivial against the, the ails of the world or the ails of time. Yeah, I, I kind of grabbed it from a, like a different place in that over the course of time, to kind of pick up right where you left off, Amy, is this exercise was a reminder that every issue, small, large, every emotion has already happened. It's already appeared on earth in some way, shape or form. So the view from above to me was trying to figure out, okay, that this isn't the first time that this has happened. So for example, I've been struggling a lot with social media. Uh, I'm in a sense, dis disheartened by the nature of debate in this country. Cause I love a good debate. I love a good conversation. And we Social know. media gives you the impression. Yeah, you guys definitely know better than anybody else. Um, but social media kind of doesn't, it doesn't seem like it allows you to, to have that debate. So in trying to go above, there are, have been periods in history where the same thing has happened. We just have a different medium to do it now. So that being said, there are tons of people that want to have interesting conversations and, and, and debate and push each other back and forth. I just have to do a better job of finding those people. So in those moments where it feels like the walls are caving in and I'm like, that's it, the world's screwed. I'm like, no, 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 just to use Marcus's example. He had two wars, a plague and a rebellion or whatever it was. Like, that's a lot to handle. And that already happened when Marcus Aurelius was alive. So now, okay, we have a virus, we have social media, we have protests going on. All of this has happened before, you know, at the same time. So being in the middle of it makes you feel like this has never happened before. But if you, if you take your view from above, you can go, okay, how did people handle this before? What did they do? So it gives you at least some idea that you can find some perspective on how to solve it, whether it's your problem or a bigger problem. So that's why I liked this particular exercise. I think it's also reassurance that it's happened before and yet 
we're still here. Correct. It happened before. We can think that, and any we can we can we can think that anything is the end of the world. It's the end of society as we know it. We've broken down. We're not turning back. You know, we've become our worst selves. Uh, we've been pretty crappy in the past as well. So I mean, you know, the dark ages. You ever heard of those? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They literally called them. Yep. Dark. Yes, exactly. <laughs> they were like, it was like the, uh, that it wasn't, wasn't cloudy. Great. Yeah. <laughs> the not so great ages. <laughs> but, but it does help gaining that perspective, which is the whole purpose of this is the different perspectives. You know, we started by removing ourselves from ourselves by being a, a narrator to ourselves, a counselor to ourselves. Then we looked at if we were just an observer outside. Then we looked at if we put ourselves in someone else's shoes and now it's taking that one, that one step up further to say, you know what, we, we got through that, we learned, we, you know, the problem is sometimes, the pro I think honestly, the problem is that we don't do enough perspective taking in our lives in, in society in that we, we continually think that this thing that's happening is unique to just us. We don't study our history to understand our present and our future, you know, and that's, that's, yeah. that's always the thing that we need to do. But yeah, I, I, I liked your take on that, Rob, and how it's more that this, this has happened before and we got through it. Yeah, I like that. I, I, I like that you took it that way. I, you know, I wrote down that backing out of a passion gives me time to breathe. Mm. and I kind of backed up and I was like well that seems kind of obvious right a yoga teacher that needs some time to breathe but um, I, I'm able to process my passions best if I'm moving and call this from a former dance career or just how I work best is it's hard for me to process something sitting down and being still it helps me to be able to be walking or moving or having that that flow a good the good flow of life as i guess marcus would say but having that flow to to, to you know they say when you yawn you're actually not tired it's just your brain's trying to get more oxygen so it's like if your brain knows it needs more oxygen it sense it senses you to yawn to take a big and I think for me, I, I, I definitely am in tune with the fact that if I can back out long enough to have that yawn, to have that breath, mm. it just gives me some space to breathe it out. And then, then usually the passion part kind of settles down and I'm able to use my rationale, shifting into that rational thought. So mm. which of them, Sierra, for you, did you, did you find the most helpful? Or did you connect with the you most? Know, I think probably vastness of space helps oh, yeah. me the most, the second one. Um, there's, a, there's a meditation that I've done several times. To, it's a guided meditation where uh, you, you get quiet and still, and then basically they have, they have you imagine your soul like floating outside of your body. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mind initially went to my experiences with that, how you, you kind of like see yourself from way up above and then you zoom outside the town, outside the country, out into space, whatever, um, as a way of seeing as a, a different perspective. But I think that that helps me the most. I wrote down floating balloon, um, just kind of backing out and not it being so personal because when you can back out of something being personal, it takes you out of the ego a little bit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, obviously your ego is always there because if you don't have an, an ego at all, then you're dead. You know, you don't have a, an identity. <laughs> but when you can take it outside of like, this isn't all about me, you know? Yeah, well, I did like, I liked how right at the beginning of the, the chapter, you know, they, they specifically seem that the whole purpose of this in many ways is to, to what you said at the beginning is that we tend to have this very narrowed view of it. So it, it consumes our thoughts or consumes our mind for a period of time for however long that is, whether it's a couple minutes or it's our whole life, right? But it says that, you know, your problems can seem so much larger when you have this very narrow view. So being able to just, you know, 
broad, broaden it, you know, being able to broaden it, be it broaden it over a span of time, over your point to, you know, a, a, a span of space where you are, or a span of, you know, history being able or comparing it to other people, just being able to have that perspective can be really helpful to get out of your own head. I also love tie it back to the word passions that what this is all about. I don't know that I've ever tied negative emotions to passions mm -hmm. because you think of passion as the things that drive you forward. But in a sense, your negative emotions do, but we don't talk about them in the fact that the negative emotions are the same as the positive ones. So anger, in a sense, drives you forward. You just are not really aware of it. So I did like that that is tied in there because that gave me a different perspective on, oh, yeah, because when you do dumb things out of anger or say dumb things or mean things, you're saying it from that passionate standpoint, but it's just a negative passion. So you kind of go on the attack, but you're still going on the attack is still going forward. You're not retreating from these negative emotions. You're still like, you know, moving forward. So I thought that giving me that perspective was like, oh, that's a very interesting way to look at anger or even sadness in a way, or these things, these emotions that we attach to events. We go back to Amy's point. The key is trying to detach it as quickly as possible. However, you need to do that. If that's the view from above. It's like taking a look at the time. If it's meditation, whatever. That's the point of it. Saying, "Ooh, I'm feeling this passion, this negative emotion. Now, what do I do about it? And why am I feeling that way?" So, if it's a, for me a comment on social media, I'm like, "Why am I feeling this passionate about some other person's comment on social media?" Like, mm, interesting, you know. And then I can detach myself from that and go, okay, time to move on, spend enough time on that or whatever. Right. Well, and I, from a stoic perspective, I, I think the idea too would be like, you can have those passions, whether it be positive, negative, whatever, but what you do with it, is it guiding you towards the virtues that you want to move towards or is it guiding you away from it? And that can be hard to to see that compass in the middle of everything. And that's why I love what in some of the previous chapters, how they've talked about how passions can blind you from that is it's okay to feel that, but what you do with it, is it guiding you towards what you want or is it guiding you away? Is it, is it just distracting you? Love that. Mm -hmm. I mean, if your main focus is to get to X, Y, Z, and what somebody else is saying is distracting you so much that you can't focus on the road to get there, then it's not serving your ultimate purpose. Your ultimate purpose is to get there. Now, maybe it is serving a purpose. Maybe it's teaching you a lesson. Maybe it's allowing you to fix a karma about, you know, people saying things that they're not informed about. Maybe there's an opportunity there for you to learn something from that distraction, but if your frustration makes it so cloudy that you can't see any of it, then it's not serving its purpose. Right. Exactly. Because sometimes to your point that that extreme or elevated emotion can shake you up so much that it causes you to then go, oh, like you talk about the ooh, you know, it's like, it's an extreme version of the ooh. It's more like a punch, <laughs> a punch in the gut, positive or negative. But, you know, having that extreme emotion that can maybe help you tap into, okay, why did I feel this way? All right. What is this? What is this trying to tell me? But to your exact point, being able to, I, I even wrote down what you said. You said to back out of the passion and give yourself a moment to breathe. So just pause, be able to pause before you do anything else, but reflect on that passion that you're feeling and then use something, use any of these perspective methods, view from above being one of them. But take it and, and be able to assess it. Like it's, you know, it's like a, a stress test, you know, try, try different things and see which one is going to give you the best perspective on this in order to your point, you know, get out of that narrow view, get out of your rumination and actually move forward in some productive way. So it's going to help you move forward. So you're not stuck. Yeah. You're not stuck in your misery to use their term. Well, and I, I think this all applies to exactly what we do here at Pain and Port Strategies in a sense, too, in that, you know, doing this will, will make you more mindful, will make you a better team player, will also make you a better communicator. 